Okay, this is probably my least favorite function transformation. We've left it till last. F of AX. So that's anywhere you see the letter X inside of a function, you multiply it by A. So if I give you an example, look at my equation for my periodic function, 10 sine X. If I increase the A value to 2, it's going to be 10 sine, 10 sine 2x. So I'm taking that x value and I'm multiplying it by 2. Another quick example, uh, let's put our A value back to 1. Here's our cubic, x plus 4 times x plus 1 times x minus 3. If I multiply that by 2, everywhere x appears in our function, I'm multiplying that by 2. All right, so uh, that's the sort of function transformation we're dealing with. And if you were watching that, you might have seen what happens when we do it. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, doesn't agree with me, so I can't zoom in, but that's all right, whatever. All right, let's look at our funny little piecewise function here, the complicated function. Now, watch this peak here. As I increase the A value, so I've increased it to an A value of 2, you can see it's compressed around the x-axis, shifts around the x-axis, shifts, I should say, dilates around the x-axis, compresses, dilates. So uh, again, this one's a bit sneaky because it's kind of the opposite of what you would expect. Because the operation is being performed on x and not the function itself, um, if the a value is 2, it's or 3, or 4, or 5, or 6, or 7, or 8, or 9, or 10. The higher the A value, the more compressed. If I increase my A value to a decimal, or sorry, if I decrease my A value to a decimal, so 0 0.3 dilates out, negative flips backwards, so negative 0 0.5 is flipped and stretched, and negative 2 is flipped, or negative 3, is flipped and compressed. So let's formalize that. I've got an original function, f of x. I've got a new function called g of x, which is equal to f of ax. Now, if that's my new function, then if a is greater than 1, it compresses by... 1 over a. What do I mean by compresses by 1 over a? Well, to take our, our 2 as an example, so let's go back to our original function where the peak is at 4. If a becomes 2, if I want to know where that new peak is going to be, if I want to shift that new peak, then I take my original number, 4, and multiply it by 1 over 2. Multiply it by 1 half. No surprises there, the answer is going to be 2. If I want to, if a becomes 3, and I want to know where the new peak will be, I take the number 4 and multiply it by 1 on 3, and that'll be where my new peak is. So it compresses by 1 on a. Similarly, if a is between 0 and 1, then it dilates, but it still dilates by 1 on a. And what I mean by that is if a is 0 0.5, or well, let's do 0 0.3, then my original peak here at 4, if I want to know where that original peak has shifted to, all I need to do is take the number 4 and multiply it by 1 on 0 0.3, which is about uh, 12 point something, and you can see my peak, or 13, and my peak's about there. Uh, if I wanted to go uh, A equals 0. Um, what else have we got? 0 0.5, 0 0.6, then 1 over 0 0.6, if I multiply it by that, I'll get this new value here. Okay, if a is between negative 1 and 0, it dilates, sorry, it flips and dilates by 1 on a. You can see that, flip, dilate. And if a is less than negative 1, it compresses and flips, or flips and compresses by 1 on a. 
All right, uh, that's function transformation number four.